Time now for this week's farmer's forecast. What a week it's been with two days of severe weather leaving no part of the state without rain. Nick Mikulis joins us now and Nick, this is really going to cause some problems for planting. Hey, thanks, Avery. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get anything done out in the field. It looks like early in the week, but I do have some good news here as we have drier conditions coming in. Now, we hadn't been rooting for dry weather for so long, but now the drought, the abnormally dry, everything is officially gone. So we have some good news there. And then that dry start to the week. And I think that lasts through most of the week. It's very warm as well. So that's going to help with the drying process. And then the rain does return late, but I don't see anything like what we saw here over the last several days. Look at these totals here. Leesville, the highest one I could find in state at almost 11 inches. And then you can see the rest of those there right here in Alexandria, 5.59 inches. But then look at that down in Baton Rouge, 1.2. So some areas of the state didn't see nearly as much and you'll be able to get out and do some work uh, a little bit sooner. Here's an estimate. Now I know these totals are going to be different than what you saw, but this shows the radar estimates. This shows the areas that we saw the heaviest rain. It was especially over the northern uh, half of the state. And then south of I-10, we had some places not even see an inch of rain. Looks like near Homa and then down toward Grand Isle, things were quite dry uh, relative to the rest of us up here in the northern half of the state. And here's your drought monitor. It's all gone. And uh, hopefully we won't see that back here for a long, long time. Your rainfall outlook for next week through at least the uh, middle and late part of the week, not much going on at all here. So it stays dry. Maybe a few sprinkles north of I-20, but that's going to be about it here, it looks like. Now, further into the future, precipitation outlook shows that we do have some rain returning. I think, again, this is late week. This is not going to be as uh, consequential. We're not going to see as much rainfall across the state, but it looks like it will get wet again. So if you're looking like, you know, you need to get to the end of the week to get out there and do some planning. I know uh, soybeans and corn slightly behind time of the five-year average. Uh, if you're looking to wait on that, it looks like you'll be okay for several days here, but then it looks like that rain does come back into the state. So I'll be watching things closely and we'll update any Anything I see and let y'all know. Back to you. Thanks, Nick. I know you were live through most of that. Well, hurricane season is still more than a month away, but a well-respected forecast is concerning for Louisiana. For the first time ever, scientists at Colorado State University are predicting 11 named hurricanes in the Atlantic. So what does that mean for the ever-receding coastline? Twyla's Josh Meeks talked to the scientists following this very closely. Every year since 1995, Colorado State University's meteorological team released a tropical forecast for the Atlantic. This year's is a doozy. The biggest numbers they've ever put in a preseason forecast, and a little added perspective on that, 23 named storms is what they're calling for. That would take us through our entire list of names and beyond. We have 21 names on our list. Baton Rouge meteorologist Dr. Steve Caparata says the potential of 11 hurricanes is a good reason to stay aware this summer. It's a big heads up because even though these forecasts don't really tell us where the storms will end up, you start throwing more darts at the board, chances are you're going to hit that target at some point, right? We're right there. Dr. Paul Miller with LSU's College of the Coast and Environment says the conditions this year are similar to those in 2005 when the Atlantic saw 15 hurricanes. We're going to be transitioning from an El Nino state, which is where we currently are, into more of a La Nina pattern. And so that the La Nina pattern favors a more active hurricane season. The erosion is almost inevitable the way that the Louisiana coastal systems are. Dr. John White is the Associate Dean of Research at LSU's College of Coast and Environment. Every hurricane season, no matter the forecast, means the potential for more land loss on Louisiana's coastline. For coastal farmers, that's a serious threat. We lose 55 square kilometers a year, whether or not we've had hurricanes or not. That's a sort of our average loss. That's like losing the city of Lafayette every two and a half years. That's how much land is lost. Um, what we noticed is that when hurricanes are far away, so if a, if a hurricane hits Lake Charles, our erosion rate goes up 60 times higher because the wind field is still large enough here to cause larger waves, which can cause a larger amount of erosion. When we get a direct strike, that's when we're losing entire swaths of wetland. It just tears the wetland up, dumps it in the water, and over a very short period of time, the whole thing degrades and falls apart. One of the biggest coastal barriers against storms is all that green. Healthy plants have a tight grip on the soil. While we're coming off of one of the worst droughts in state history, it's still too early to tell if that will weaken that barrier. We had that same drought level here this last year, um, and we're still waiting to see if the plants are gonna be able to withstand it. 
Um, but it does appear that the, the salinity is starting to drop in the soils, and so we're hopeful that that doesn't cause a large loss of plants. The work being done to reinforce the coast is never ending. That's why they're, they're planning to build the mid-barataria sediment diversion at a cost of over $2 billion to provide that sediment subsidy to the marshes to help them. You can also do nature-based um, solutions. People are building, for example, oyster shell reefs. If you can put them in front of the marshes, that will slow the wave energy down. Now, it's worth noting that CSU's forecast covers the entire Atlantic. LSU will release a more Gulf-specific forecast in May. For this week in Louisiana agriculture, I'm Josh Meeks. Hurricane season officially begins June 1st, but there have been years with May storms. The best advice for now is to be prepared with supplies and a game plan. For Parish Farm Bureau leaders, it's a good time to meet with your parish emergency operations director and get to know them before disaster strikes. That's one of the lessons learned by the Louisiana Farm Bureau Disaster Response Committee.